Good evening, <coughs> councillors, officers, and members of the public. Welcome uh, to the meeting of the Waverley uh, Executive. And um, if I may, I'll go to item one of the agenda. Um, but before I start, just a couple of housekeeping rules, um, just to cover off. We're not expecting a fire alarm this evening. So if the fire alarm goes, uh, it is the real thing. Uh, can I ask you to please exit in an orderly fashion? And the um, fire exits are over there in front of me and to my right. The assembly point is outside Waitrose, where as long as we tick your name off the register, you can then uh, obviously depart. Um, People know where the conveniences are, so that's fine. And we'll move to the first item, which is to um, confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 5th of February 2019. Colleagues, are those agreed? Agreed. In that case, I'll sign those after the meeting. And uh, we move to item two. Any apologies for absence, Miss Cameron? No apologies this evening, Leader. Thank you. Um, any uh, declarations of interest? None received. I think we have, if I'm correct, we have a property matter uh, which is inexempt and um, we need to just note that a number of the councillors have a non-pecuniary interest in that particular item, please. Thank you. From members of the public? No questions received. Thank you. Any questions from members? No questions received. Right. In that case, if I move to um, the first item, there was one speaker registered, um, but I don't see him in the audience. Councillor Hyman? No? Okay. In that case, I'll move straight to the item, um, I, which is, as I say, uh, great news story and um, it relates to all parts of Waverley and it's the report pages 9 to 16 in front of you colleagues and it relates to um, place shaping for Waverley and the uh, new place shaping approach and the recommendation that we set up a fund uh, really to focus on that. Now um, since this administration came in into um, Waverley, we've been looking at place shaping, um, and that's a huge part of our economic development strategy as well. And I think the, the great news here is that um, the proposal draws in all three tiers of council in the initial area where work is proposed, which is in Farnham, which is our largest settlement. And it's great because it really does involve working closely together of all three councils, the county and the town, um, so that we'll get, you know, we, we will see buy-in from everybody because everyone will have an opportunity to be involved in this. Um, and it really puts the, the needs of our residents at its heart. Um, it's about engaging with the local community and shaping the future of the town, the surrounding villages, um, not just now, not just for the next five years or ten years, but for the future. And it's a piece of work that I think we all know at heart has been needed for a long time. Um, and we, it'll be great to see that as it moves forward. And I know we've already received a lot of positive feedback on this plan. Um, and I know that other parts of the borough um, and we'll be watching this very carefully and again with excitement to see how this can then be replicated in, in other areas. So I commend this to you as an executive and I hope that you will be giving it your full support as, as we move this forward. Colleagues, any comments? Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank you, Leader. <clears throat> I'd just like to welcome this uh, recommendation. It's a fantastic opportunity 
for Waverley to move forward and to develop a borough uh, which um, will be at the forefront of um, a sense of community uh, in the future. Uh, it, what's particularly important here, I think, is the fact that we are looking at the neighbourhood plans which the communities themselves have developed and integrating that into this place shaping strategy. It's a fantastic opportunity and I'd like to thank uh, the officers in particular for their efforts in securing this funding because it is vitally important that we look to the future for our young people and their children in future because we need to secure a, a sound economic basis for the community. Thank you very much. Councillor Edwards, thank you. Colleagues, um, can I take it that you're uh, content? Sorry, Councillor Ailes. Thank you, Leader. I just wanted to um, also applaud this particular initiative. I am a huge fan of place shaping. I hope that we're going to be able to encourage imaginative speculation and um, not just from a business point of view, but certainly towards the health and well-being of our residents. So I think it's a wonderful, wonderful initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ailes. Any other comments or can I summarise the recommendation here? There's one recommendation that the executive recommends to council next week and that's the 250,000 one-off financial gain from our um, uh, participation in the business rate pilot goes into the um, place shaping fund. Is that agreed? agreed? Thank you. Item seven is the capital strategy, Councillor Hall. Uh, thank you, Leader. Uh, yeah, it's the time of year again when we have to uh, reapprove the Treasury management framework. Uh, this essentially deals with how we borrow and lend our money out and manage our short-term capital and what we're allowed to do. Uh, there's very little change from last year. Uh, there are three recommendations on the paper. I urge you all to support. Colleagues, any comments or can I move to the recommendations? In that case, I'll move to the recommendations. There are three recommendations. Are those agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. Moving to item eight, and that's still governance. And that is Councillor Dinas. Thank you, Leader. I hope what I say doesn't uh, get rid of the last member of the public after Councillor Edwards. Um, as I've said previously, um, getting still in place is a really important step for Waverley. It will ensure developers pay their fair share of the cost of infrastructure of the borough. I'm pleased to say that we're now charging SIL, which came into effect on the 1st of March. In December, the Council approved the arrangements on how SIL funds will be spent and how we'll consider bids from infrastructure providers to spend in the future. We've had our first meeting of the SIL Advisory Board in February where we discussed at length the criterion process for allocating SIL funds. The board's proposals were then debated in detail by the Value for Money ONS Committee. I'd like to thank the councillors present at both meetings for their constructive and positive approach to this important piece of work. The report on the agenda tonight recommends the arrangements to council. Now there are five recommendations in the report but I'm proposing that we replace the stated recommendation five with the amended wording proposed by the ONS committee, which my colleagues will find at paragraph 17 of the report, which is page 56 and 57. Thank you, Leader. Right, so you're moving an amendment, Councillor Dinas. Do you have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Edwards. And you don't wish to speak on the amendment at all? OK. Um, in that case, colleagues, does anyone else wish to speak to this item? Or can we go to the five recommendations, which include the revised recommendation? Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I am... <clears throat> I'd like to um, Sorry. Uh, Sorry. thank Cal the uh, ONS Edwards. because I... Councillor Edwards, 
Sorry. Sorry. Can I just stop you there? Because we need to agree that recommendation. So can we agree that recommendation and the wording that your your the amendment? Is that agreed? Right. Thank you. In that case, Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, just to um, express my thanks to the uh, ONS for a really positive uh, meeting and uh, the recommendations were thoroughly, thoroughly explored and um, I, I'd like to just express my thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Colleagues, any other comments before we move to the recommendations? Right, OK. Councillor Ramsdale, you're down for the next item. OK, so if we just go back, we've got five recommendations, one of which, as I say, there was a slight change to the wording, but that has been agreed amongst us and by the executive colleagues. Are the five recommendations, one of which does include that change to the wording, are those agreed? Agreed. Lovely. Thank you very much. We now move to item nine, which is the report. And that's what Councillor Ramsdale's here to um, present to us, and that's the report from the Environment Overview and Scrutiny Committee, which is the review of the structure to deliver SIL. Councillor Ramsdale. Thank you, Leader. Um, as you so eloquently explained, that's why I'm here. <clears throat> um, the Environment Overview and Scrutiny Committee, I think, were not that aware of the what had already been achieved when we first thought, hang on, for SIL, the financial arrangements were being put in place, but we weren't sure that the arrangements were put in place as to how people with an environment background or a particular issue would, would get to see it happen or what they had to do. Um, <clears throat> I think by the time the first meeting happened, when we've seen so much had happened with regard to the, the board, etc., much of why we thought we needed to start had already been achieved. But we still took a view that we should take that different for you from value for money, look at it from a end user perspective, somebody out there in one of the villages perhaps saying, hey, what about my GP surgery, my school playground, my whatever it is, and how would that happen? How... And it's with that kind of thinking that we simply presented to you a, a list. It was meant to also fit on one sheet of A4. It's funny how these things seem to keep going, um, of, of suggestions. And, and that's all they really are. And if... Um, Councillor Deanis has got the time, wants to, to go through in more detail with me. I'll be delighted. But I understand, of course, if you're all busy and you're all already convinced, they're better. The one that I would in particular like you to, to think about um, was the reporting on SIL expenditure, um, where although there's no formal requirement that SIL has to be spent in the village where the houses are being built or any kind of linkage of that nature, nor any formal requirement that X percentage of it is spent on schools or on leisure centres or any other particular activity. Um, we, we kind of thought that people who were wanting to know what had happened to the SIL monies would, it, would appreciate that sort of information. And indeed, uh, we all, other members of the group particularly thought that other borough councillors would appreciate seeing that they would got their share as they thought about it, either in education because that's what they're interested in or leisure centres or in their part of, of Waverley, given Waverley is, as we know, a joined up massive a number of um, important towns and villages and, and other places. So I'll leave those thoughts with you, but thank you for listening to me. No, you've, you, what you said makes a lot of sense, and I know we've already made some, some slight changes to some of the wording in one of the recommendations, but Councillor Dinas, do you want to speak further on that? Yes, uh, thank you for those comments, and I think it's a, a comment that we came in our initial meeting. Um, obviously, with technology, we are advancing what we can publish, and uh, you know they're doing some good stuff where it will be accessible for people to look at what's being spent and where. So that is in hand. It's, it's I think, probably at the final stages of development, um, but we are looking at it's that people will be able to have a look online. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Councillor Dinas. Colleagues, there's one recommendation under that, which is that the executive considers and endorses the recommendations that are set out in the report. I'm sure you'd also like to endorse and thank the um, uh, Overview and Scrutiny Committee for the work that they did on this um, 
which which has been really helpful in in you know making sure that a lot more of the members of council understand this as we move forward with with something that's a very new initiative here colleagues is that agreed agreed thank you we now move to item 10 and that's the delivery of new affordable council homes through section 106 sites councillor mrs king do you want to take that item thank you thank you very much indeed leader uh, under section 17 of the housing act 1985 the council is able to acquire additional affordable homes without building them themselves a new venture following legal advice allows us to acquire affordable homes through section 106 agreements and these homes are able to offer a range of tenures to meet our local needs for instance shared ownership which is part rent part buy where the tenant uses savings and a mortgage to buy a percentage of the equity and pays rent on the remaining percentage and over time they're able to increase their share until the property is 100 percent owned it's called staircasing apparently we were approached by the developer of a site in cranley to see if we were interested in making a bid for five new homes two two-bed houses for affordable rent and three three-bedroom houses for shared ownership the financial details etc are covered in the exempt annex to the report and i won't go there leader delivery of affordable homes in this way will help waverley to meet its um, 314 affordable homes per annum target as defined in the west surrey schmar 2015 and it's hoped that further section 106 sites will come forward in due course it's an it's an exciting and new venture for us and a really good way for uh, developers to meet their section 106 obligations and for us to acquire decent affordable homes in the process and i strongly support the recommendations leader thank you councillor mrs king thank you um colleagues there are four recommendations to that item are those agreed agreed thank you um the next item item 11 which is the report from the housing overview and scrutiny committee um on their report um, entitled to pride or prejudice councillor seaborn's here and you're going to present that item councillor seaborn thank you leader i'm going to quickly summarize the work undertaken by the uh, task and finish group uh, into social housing i'm doing this on behalf of councillor liz townsend who very effectively chaired the group but is unable to be here today and sends her apologies in september 2018 in response to the grenfell tower tragedy the green paper entitled the new deal for social housing came in front of the housing ons committee it was felt that in line with the report's main principles waverley as a responsible social landlord should try to establish the extent and causes of prejudice experienced locally by its tenants the report in front of you has been a cross-party effort with good collaboration between the task group a number of officers and members of our tenants panel the enthusiasm and effort put into the exercise by everyone involved deserves recognition and thanks the successful outcome resulted from a keen willingness and enthusiasm to attack the project within a very short time frame and with a deep desire to get to the core of the issues of stigma surrounding council housing and to ultimately improve the lives of our tenants the report entitled council housing pride or prejudice not only looks at stigma but also seeks to identify those aspects of social housing that our tenants are proud of so that we can seek to replicate and build on it in the future officers and members of the task group worked extremely hard to gather primary evidence ending up with over 600 responses an outcome with which we were delighted our tenants were invited through post or email to drop in sessions across the borough and these sessions were really valuable and allowed us to question tenants answers in more depth we also used an online tenant survey for those tenants who were unable to get to the drop-in sessions other members of the public including councillors staff contractors and waverley citizens panel uh, were also sounded out using an online survey it became very clear early on that in general people perceive social housing positively and feel that it is a valuable though diminishing resource 
It's also clear that many people are not aware of the eligibility criteria that we apply or Waverley's allocation policy. So whilst we acknowledge that the demographics of our respondents impose some limitations on our findings and that further representations from certain groups would be beneficial, we feel that we have collected a really useful data set which will provide a firm basis for further research. Now, I must add a, a huge thanks again to the officers and particularly to Yasmin Makin who compiled all of the data as well as our thoughts and comments and constructed the final excellent report in record time and managing to maintain good humour at all times. We put forward 18 recommendations which range from reviewing housing services to communications as well as improving the external, uh, external appearance and maintenance of our housing. You'll also note that we are building on the excellent work already carried out in the Affordable Housing Supplementary Planning Document and our Council Housing Design Standards. We recognise that these recommendations are fairly wide-ranging, however we believe that if accepted and implemented they will go some way towards tackling stigma, empowering tenants and improving our services, as well as promoting Waverley as a landlord of choice. So the group hopes that you will feel able to endorse these recommendations. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Seaborn, thank you for um, summarising and, and um, presenting that. Um, and also, please pass on our thanks to the scrutiny committee who did the work, the, the actual task group, um, as well as the officers who were involved. It's, it's a really good um, piece of work that I think come... Um, really helps inform us in, in a number of ways. Um, is there anyone else here on the executive? Councillor King, you'd like to speak to that item? Yes, Lisa, thank you very much. I would indeed. And first, I'd like to echo what Councillor Seaborn said and to thank the Housing ONS Task and Finish Group members and Yasmin Makin in particular for their time, commitment and hard work in carrying out this really interesting piece of work. And if you actually plod through the whole of the report, it's a pretty impressive job they've done, I have to say. The Housing Owners uh, Committee recently accepted the Task and Finish Group's 18 recommendations shown on page 123, but I thought you might be interested to know that seven of the recommendations support and inform work already in progress. There's the allocation policy review, customer satisfaction, code of conduct, asset management strategy, the right to buy maintenance levy, shared ownership opportunities and affordable housing supplementary planning document. Four, er four recommendations are new areas of work. The flexible tenancy review, uh, the communications uh, policy for eligibility and induction training and supporting the See the Person campaign. Four recommendations request further research into the project data and two recommend progress outcome reports to committee. Uh, one recommendation there actually concerns the Waverley Citizens Panel, and I totally support this. Thank you. Councillor King, thank you. Councillor Story and then Councillor Royal. Thank you, Leader. Um, fantastic report. The thing that rather disappointed me, I have to say, is um, the information on page 97 about can you spot social housing by its external appearance? Um, <laughs> 85% of um, people responding seem to think that, yes, they could identify it, um, at least sometimes. And I'm wondering whether that is council housing in Waverley specifically, or if it's council housing in general. But whichever, I think it's, um, it's very sad because I know how much effort goes into um, making the houses that the, this council provides um, as good as commercial housing and um, at the same level of quality, if not better. I look at um, certain housing schemes that I had pleasure of opening when I was the mayor and I would think I would certainly love to live in some of them. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mrs King and then Councillor Ailes. Thank you for letting me come back, Lisa. Uh, Councillor Storey's raised a really, really interesting point. And in fact, one of the, the drivers for them being obvious social housing within Waverley 
is the inclusion of our solar panels on their roofs. Councillor Wells. Thank you, Leader. And I would just like to um, comment on, on that point. I think, obviously, post-war built council houses are very identifiable as just that. And I think that the houses I'm seeing now that are being built are not quite so identifiable. So I think we've made leaps ahead there. But I would just like to make another point, And I see an overarching opportunity um, coming out of this um, report with regard to place shaping and I hope we're going to not just work in silos here I think we have a huge opportunity to apply our place shaping um, um, plans to to this and, and one particular the state appearance I think place shaping can be big it can be small it can be anything to to just make something better Mm. And I think that I hope that we're going to apply the place shaping criteria to to our our own um, estates. Thank you, Councillor Wells. Thank you, um, colleagues. You have one two recommendations under that item. Are those agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Um, item twelve is the peer review of planning decision-taking and stakeholder engagement. Uh, Councillor Dinas. Thank you, Leader. <clears throat> this is an update report to the Executive on the good work that was undertaken in July last year to, to externally review the planning decision-making process and the customer care aspects of the planning service. Since the peer review, all members have had a briefing and a workshop on the findings and the officers have prepared a detailed action plan. The details are all included in the annexes of the report. On the 25th of February, the Environment ONS considered the action plan and have made a number of observations which are set out in the report on page 140 and 141. I'd like to thank the ONS committee for their consideration of this very detailed matter. The report on tonight's agenda asks the executive to note the actions arising from the peer review recommendations. These are now included in the service plan for 2019-2020. So we will monitor progress throughout the year. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Dinas, thank you. Um, colleagues, any comments or can we move to the recommendation? In that case, we've got one recommendation. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Item 13, um, that involves all portfolio holders. Um, that's the service plans um, for the portfolios. Um, that's a lengthy report running from pages 181 to 278. And that's the service plans uh, for 2019 to 2022. Colleagues, any comments or can we move to the recommendation on that item? We'll move to the recommendation. One recommendation, is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Um, the next item, and I don't propose to go into exempt. You have got papers there, but um, we'll um, hopefully we can keep this short and, and uh, in open. Um, it's a property matter. It's a freehold sale in Farnham Castle Ward. Councillor Hall, do you wish to add anything to that as the portfolio holder? Uh, just very briefly, Leader, this is a sale of a freehold. Um, uh, it's been uh, reviewed by Value for Money Overview and Scrutiny, and it is the view that the Council has no grounds to object to the sale of the freehold. Colleagues, there's one recommendation. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Um, we then have the exclusion of the press and public, and if I can ask that um, pursuant to procedural rule 20 and in accordance with section 100A of the Local Government Act 1972, that the press and public be excluded from the meeting. Colleagues, I won't spend ages going on through this, but um, are you content with that recommendation? And is that agreed that we go into exempt? Agreed. Thank you your time and um, for our speakers who came this evening to present their items on ONS again my thanks and my thanks to all the officers um, who've worked so hard to support 
um, the various um, task groups that have uh, been working on the different ONS projects. So thank you all for coming and uh, safe journeys home. I now declare the meeting closed. <laughs>